Okay, uh, we're going to talk first about uh, any questions. I'm not going to do every problem. I'm only going to really do one. So, um, okay. so kinetics one. Um, I guess I could start on number one. Right. Does anybody have any questions about how to get something or how to uh, execute? a part of those problems and those are called differentiated rate laws and we're just starting to get into practice of it we're trying to find the order finding the what the rate law looks like and then trying to find a rate law constant that's the three main goals <coughs> any questions i'm looking around the, the you were supposed to have tried one and two so let's try to actually execute those things yeah can you do one e sure Okay, so here's uh, problem number one. Um, and the, and that's specific. Okay, so uh, the first A through D, that has to deal with uh, getting the, the order, getting the rate law, getting the rate constant, and then letter D, uh, you plug in new uh, values into that rate constant. E is a little different. It says that at the instant when NO is reacting at the rate of 1.0 times 10 to the negative fourth, what is the rate at which O2 is reacting? So this really can be an independent question. This wouldn't have to deal with the rest of the work. So if you would just uh, utilize, um, I kind of actually did this problem, funny enough, of all the equations. This one is from our notes yesterday. So if this is reacting at a rate of 1.0 times 10 to the negative fourth moles per liter seconds, it says what is the rate at which O2 which O2 is reacting, whoops, and NO2 is forming. So I want to know the other two. So basically, it's a two to one. This is being consumed at twice the rate as that, right? So basically, what you could do, you could still use mole ratios. If you're like, I don't know how to show my work with this. You could show your work uh, with this. Because the moles will basically cancel out a one uh, from the NO. Is it NO? And so that'll take those moles out, and then I'll just add those moles again, which will continue to keep the rate. And I did do the wrong numbers there. It's a 1 and a 2. And then here's the big key on this one. Uh, whatever answer this is, it's going to have the same value as that, but the other one should have the opposite rate. Val like the, the sign should change technically. Or you should have to say something like is being produced instead of consumed, something like that. So the other one would be a 2 to 2. So it will actually be the same value. They're just opposites. This is being consumed, that is being produced. So th this rate will be the same as that rate. This rate will be half of that rate. Um, it's not asking being equal. So we ended yesterday, one of the, the topics, well, the middle of uh, the notes about making them equal, that's how lesson 23 starts. That's not what it's asking. It's asking what is the rate in comparison to each other, not what would the rate have to be to be equal to the other one. Um, what would have to happen to create the same amount? Yeah, I would have to double the rate of this to equal that. This is just asking what is the actual rate. So that's kind of independent of the rest of the problem in the same format. Okay. All right, what else? Yeah? Uh, 2D. 2D. Okay, so uh, we have a whole new problem there. You got to kind of can set it up, and you got to you can't skip around. So what two D is? I can I can give you the generic part of it. I don't have all the other work done, but I can get you there. Is uh, it says find uh, the rate of appearance of N two at the instant when N O and H two equal those. Okay. Well, if you look at the equation, I'll rewrite it right here. Okay, it's, it's giving me values of these, and it's asking what's the rate of appearance. Okay, well, we'll talk about that in a second. But it, rate laws are all about the reactants. So I don't know the, the order. You'd have to figure this out, but here's the generic rate law. I know this. So then in letter A, you had to find the order. 
So X and Y, they could be ones, they could be zeros, they could be twos. Those are the numbers that we're looking for, zero, one, or two, nothing else. If you're getting a three or a four, you're doing something wrong. It's zero, one, and two. And then all you're doing is actually just plugging these numbers in. So for NO, you would have put 0 0.350. And for H2, you would have put 0.205. And all you have to understand is this is the rate of the overall reaction. It's not specific to one thing. This is the rate of the overall reaction. So if I talk about the rate of the reaction, um, per se, uh, of something disappearing, it's the same as the idea of what is appearing. So it's a, it's a blanket uh, statement of, of what is happening. So whatever that answer is, whatever that rate is, that, that is of what is uh, of N2. It's, it's the disappearance or the appearance. It's all, it's the rate. And when you're talking about it just in generic uh, terms, okay? Uh, when it's a single mole, then like this reaction is one reaction. There's only one of these. So like this would be creating twice that rate. This would be consuming twice that rate. Um, it, so the answer would be whatever you get. I don't know the orders off the top of my head. I, I didn't do the problem. I didn't look at it. So you'd have to figure that out. You have to isolate them. And so that, there's four experiments there, by the way. Uh, what one would you do? What one would you pick to find the order of n? Oh, what experiment do you find? Which two? One and two, isn't it? Because on H two it's the same. So my better question is, what ones do you pick? Well, it's not actually not all that hard to jump to it. What is the one that you choose when you want to pick H two for the order? What experiments? Two and three. Because if you look at two and three, it's both 0 0.210, 0 0.210. So then you are uh, keeping that constant. So then the only reason why the rate changes is because you're changing the H2. So that's how you find the orders. Again, it's zero, one, or two. It should come out pretty clean, uh, what you're looking for. So, okay. All right, well, we have uh, some things to do today. So I have some sheets that I gave you. And it is very important that you're with me. So if you're doing other things and then all of a sudden say, what was that? And then you start asking somebody else and then you deter them from what we're doing and causing them to uh, lose track. Then you've just caused yourself to lose track and someone else and then it kind of uh, dominoes. So please try to be with me as we do this. Uh, it will help a lot, okay? So first, I gave you a sheet. We're gonna work on this sheet uh, together. It's kinetics rate law. Uh, on the top, it looks like a notebook piece of paper. All right. So first, I want to just talk about the idea on the top. There's differentiated and integrated. And I'm not going to get into the depth that you would if you're in calc. I'm not. It's not what this is about. So I don't want people to start getting stressed about that either or thinking that this is going to mirror that exactly. There may be some terms that reflect your knowledge uh, and some things that you might notice, but it doesn't mean that uh, you need to have all that down. Uh, this is going to be a great cheat sheet for you for quite a long time. And some of this is just brute force. You're just going to, like, okay, this is for this order, this is for that, and this is for the other order. We're going to organize this by order. So we have zero order, first order, and second order. And there's a lot of stuff on here, and we're not all using it today at all. And that's why I'm also printing it out for you already. Okay? Note first, the top one. Top one is something that should make sense to you. This is just a simple, uh, and all this stuff, by the way, all integrated rate laws, we are going to be working with just one compound, so it's going to decompose. And I jumped a little forward. Uh, yesterday, we did differentiate rate law, and it says right on the top, it sh says, shows how the rate depends on concentrations. So we're manipulating, if I double the concentration, what happens to the, the rate, right? If I quadruple the concentration, what happens to my rate? That's going to be the differentiated. You're going to find those going to be a little less complicated. An integrated rate law depends on time. Shows how the concentration depends on time. So all these have time, T. All of them are, they're all going to have time in them. Okay? So uh, the top row, though, that should mirror what we've been doing before. If, if I just ask for a normal rate law that's a differentiated one, uh, you could just have rate equals K because if you had this with a zero, it'd be gone. This is to the first order, and this is the second order. And there's nothing more about that. There it is, and you just put the concentration in. It has nothing to do with time. Okay, but these are the two things that we're going to actually, well, we're going to talk about all this today, but I'll show you kind of how it's used. Um, zero, first, and second is going to relate to three kinds of ways to describe the concentration. 
either just concentration, and it's all right here. If you're going to circle one thing or write anything, it's just this beginning part, but don't mess these equations up. It's just concentration, it's natural log, or it's one over the concentration. That's what you're going to have to kind of brute force memorize. So if you maybe want to write by zero first and second, what you could write by the zero, we just we have concentration. By the first, we have natural log of that concentration. And by the second, we're going to have inverse concentration. That is what, if you can start attaching those ideas, everything else is exactly the same. Everything else is reduplicated over and over again by just utilizing the proper way of talking about concentrations. So it's going to be concentration, natural log of concentration, and inverse concentration. It's the only thing I actually have to technically tell you because everything else is going to be exactly the same. Like that's the only thing that's going to be different from one to the next for the most part. All right, so what are these integrated rate laws? We're going to practice them right now, but if you had a... Uh, a graph, I'm just going to bring this up a little bit, and if you had a graph, which that's why you have the graphing calculators, and you wanted the graph as zero or a first or a second order, I'm just going to put it right here, okay, the, does anybody recognize what these equations kind of look like? Anybody recognize what they, what do they all have in common? What do they mirror? Very famous equation. Y equals mx plus b. This is y equals mx plus b. So let's make sure we understand that. Again, write whatever you need to. So what is y, what is m, what is x, what is b? I, I got it. Okay, great. Then let's make sure we understand this when we relate it to the terms that we're going to deal with right now. So y is my y-axis, right? Correct? So I'm going to talk about, let's talk about first order just as to talk about that. So here's my y. That means, oh, wait a minute. You just said that we're labeling all first orders with natural log of, of uh, concentration. Great. So there's my natural log of concentration right there. And then what is m? Slope, right? That's my slope. Well, what is slope in this case? Oh, it's written right here. Slope is k. Okay? So when I'm dealing with any kind of slope, we talked about that yesterday, that the rate equals uh, the negative slope. Well, k in a, in a straight line will be uh, my rate constant, which my rate constant can tell me what my slope is, and vice versa. So if I can determine the slope, I can determine what my rate constant is. Okay, so that's going to be my k. And why, is, why are two of them negative and one's positive? We'll get into that, but the real reason is that this one's flipped, so it's already going to be a positive slope. So we don't need to flip the, the sign. The other ones are going to have negative slopes, so that's why you got to counteract that, and we'll get into that. Um, what is x? x is the x-axis, right? And what is x in every one of those? Time. Every one of them is time, right? Every one of them. So if I was going to label a graph, then that would have a t there. And then finally, the one that if someone's going to make a mistake, they might not understand this. What is b? No, just like the initial what? Well, now, th just in this equation, you don't have no I you have no idea what this is for, except that it's y equals mx plus b. What is b? The y-intercept, right? It's the y-intercept. So in this case, if you're not aware, I don't know, I can't remember if we've talked about that or not yet, so let's talk about it right now, is that any time you have a concentration with a little circle, and I heard somebody say it, so you were right, this is initial concentration. So whatever the initial concentration, so what does that mean? Time zero. What are you starting with? What's your initial concentration? Right? What, what, what are you starting at? And then I hope, and the goal, and in this case it'll be downward. We want a straight line. And we're going to do that today. And if it's not a straight line, then it's not that order. Hey, I plugged it into natural, uh, uh, natural law um, concentration, the LN, natural log. Uh, and it's not a straight line. Shoot, it's not first order. Okay, I'm going to try zero or second order, and we're going to see. And if we get a straight line, then I know my order. So we're going to use some data today to figure that out. So the hard part, you got to get through it once. So I've given you a screen, uh, a sheet with all sorts of screenshots. They're not perfect. Okay, so if you need to make notes, fine. If you're like, I got this, great. But we're going to do the problem on this sheet. So please don't put this away. We're going to work on this one. 
So I'm, I'm going to go very slow. We're going to do basically, I think, for surely one problem, if not maybe two today. And that, that's the whole goal today. Um, I meant to do a demo, but uh, a couple things happened this morning. I wasn't able to get to it, and that's okay. We'll do it tomorrow. Um, it kind of showed a couple things. Okay, so this should be the data table that's on your um, the, the note sheet. So turn on your calculators. I don't have one now. It's okay. I hope this will be a little tricky. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to graph this. So, hmm, this is hard. I haven't done this in a while. Uh, what you will do, we, if you do not have a TI-83 or 84, this is going to be a little tricky. So I'm, I'm doing this in terms of that right now. If, if you don't have one in front of you, you need to work with someone and you need to see that this is working. So first, what you do... <laughs> Hard one I don't actually have in front of me. Um, actually, first, what you should do, unless if you have a real hard time with this, um, you should actually hit second in mem just to start off here. And mem is over by the plus sign, I believe, like the lower right. And then you should clear all lists. I think it's the number four clear lists. I don't want anything on your lists. So it should be a, I think it's on the plus sign. Is it on the plus sign? Yeah. All right, so you go to second and plus and clear all lists, okay? Then what you're going to do is that upper right image, and I try to put these in order on your, um, so you should have these side by side right now, please. You are going to hit stat. That's how you get to that first image. Stat in the middle. And then... And then you just hit enter. And if you do, you should get this to pop up. You should get an L1, L2, L3, and I hope they're all blank. If they're not, you didn't clear lists. What I'd like you to do, regardless of how much you're going to write, and some of you are like, I don't need to write anything. Good luck. I hope you got it down. Um, these columns are vital. So on my sheet, I would write these uh, notations on the top just so you understand. This is everything. If you can put the data in the right way, and it seems very robotic and difficult in the beginning. Trust me, it's going to be the exact same thing every time. People get it. This isn't like I'm lost. Like within two or three tries um, in my uh, experiences, people get this down. Okay, this uh, L1 is going to be... Um, It's going to be your time. Okay. L2 is your concentration. L3 is going to be your natural log. And L4 is going to be the inverse of your concentration. So what it does is it goes in order. Zero, first, second, order. Zero, first, second. Now you can do it any way you want. but. This tries to keep it as organized as possible with kind of a numerical theme to it, okay? So we're always going to put our time first and then the other one. So what I'd like you to do right now, and don't go ahead of me, please. Just be patient unless you really feel like you got it down. So this right now is my L1. This is my L2. This is going to be my L3. This is going to be my L4. What I'd like you to do is plug in these numbers into L1. So you... You hit it in there, hit enter. Hit the next one, hit enter. So 0, 1, 5, 10, 15, 20. And then go to the second column and put in those values. Please make sure they're right. It's amazing when you don't put them in right. That's Obviously, you're going to struggle. So do that. What I am going to try... I, I'm... A little taken back. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that this will be okay. I'm borrowing these from the math department. I'm not guaranteed to have these every day. Uh, so once again, if you have, you can definitely do this real longhand. But if you have a friend or something like that who may have graphing calculators, usually I find most people never use them the way that they should be. So could you maybe make a switch or borrow one for the next week and a half? I will try to do my best to continue to get some. I have a bunch of TI-89s, but they are clunky. Uh, just because they're a bigger number does not mean they're easier to use. So, once you have that down, okay, here's the trick now. 
To get this correct, and it's a little frustrating because if you ever change anything, it doesn't fix itself. You need to go up into, you need to literally highlight L3. So you push up and you should be highlighting L3, okay? Then what we need is we need to take the natural log, but we're highlighting it. So we're literally up in L3. You need to take the natural log of L2. So you don't type in L2, there's an actual L2. So you highlight it, you're going to hit natural log, which is, looking at it up, oh, it's just uh, to the left of number four. And then, I don't know if you see it, but do you see above the number two, there's a literal L2. If you hit second, and then number two, which is L2, like you actually have to make it. So you'll take natural log of L2. If you hit enter, shoot, I, yeah, this is really hard. If you hit enter, they should all fill in. Uh, do they? I don't. Yeah. Then go and highlight the next one, and you want to do one over L2. Why? Because L2 is your concentration. So you take natural log of L2 and you do one over L2, but you need to highlight the top. If you put it in that line, it doesn't work. You have to highlight the literal L4 and then make that one over L2. This is natural log of L2. L2 is on the two button. If you're doing this right, these are the first numbers that should pop. Well, tell me if these are the numbers. I don't, again, I don't have anything in front of me now. This should be the first one. Is that what we have? Okay, if you did it right, those are the numbers you should have. Now, you can definitely fill those in. You don't necessarily have to, but you can fill those in if you'd like on your actual sheet. But your calculator did it all for you. Martin, what's up? It's to the left of the four. Now I'm trying to go slow right now, so if you have questions, let me know. This is important though. No. Did you get these? And then just, just be patient, just wait. If you're extremely bored and feeling like you need to work on something, work on Kinetics 1 for a minute. remember what to do next so that calculator is weird. <laughs> no, I'm just looking at the screens I printed off for you guys. I'm trying to think of. Okay, next what we need to do. Where it says stat plots, that's setting up So where the, the fourth one down where it says stat plot, and then you got a bunch of like one, two, three, and four, and it says plot on, plot off. You're setting up your graphs, okay? This is what you need to have, and it does not say it on mine. So if you want to just write literally on the screen itself, you can, or to the side. We need three graphs. Now, if you have a TI-84+, plus, life is really simple. It, it actually cues you for some things. Uh, and I don't know exactly when and where it does, but it, it's very nice. It's only going to be more helpful for you. Here's my concern, and this is where I'm hoping, and I'm, I, I know I can't guarantee this for everyone, is that if you can have a calculator that you've already pre-set up or it's been set up, you won't have to worry about some of this other work that's been done, you, or else you will have to do it. What's good, though, is that it's the same idea every single time. So we need three graphs. There's a plot one, plot two, and plot three. We need this one to be L1, L2, L1, L3, and L1, L4. So right now on the screen, if you'll notice, it says L1, L2, L1, L3, L1, L2. If you want to change that last L2 to an L4, then at least it's accurate on the screen itself. Go to your screen sheet. Just do it, please. Just so then you have it, oh, the right sheet. So the fourth screen down, change the, second, the, the bottom L2 one to an L4. And then that's actually what it should look like. Where it says plot on, plot off, see that? Okay. So I, I don't even I don't have my laser, right? So I feel, I feel so naked. 
Okay, so how do you do it? First off, what you do, you, you hit second and stat plot. That's why it says stat plot on the top. So stat plot's in the upper left for all TI-83s. So hit second and stat plot. And then what you do is you hit enter on any one plot. And you'll know, you'll see an X, oh, right here, this screen. You'll see an X list and a Y list. You need to make this L1 and L2, and then L1 and L3, and L1 and L4. So how do you do it? You highlight it, and the L1s through L4s are all on your 1, 2, and 3 buttons. You have to hit second. You don't type L and then 1. You don't type L and then 2. You have to hit second in the L1 or the L2. So you go to where the X, the Y list is, for example, and I'm going to make that second L2. I'm going to say it again. I go to stat plot, second and stat plot. I highlight one of the plots. So I just go down to number one, let's say. I'm going to make that one where it says X and Y. Mine says L1, L3, right now. For the stat one, I want L1, second, L2. Now, what you can do is instead of leaving there, guys, you see how... This is You see how there's these three right here? You can just scroll up and then instead of leaving it, select plot two. Now plot two needs to be L1, L3. So scroll down, make sure this is L1. If this is an L3, you hit second and what's the L3 on? Is it on three? I think it's on three. Then go up to plot three and you make that one L1, L4. So when you're done, if you're like, I don't know if I did it right. Hit exit, hit second and stat plot, and then you can look at this screen. Does it say L1, L2, L1, L3, L1, L4? You'll know if you did it right. Hit second and stat plot. And please ask questions, raise your hand. Just if you're not knowing where a button is, I mean, that's what's just stopping you. Let me know. And I urge you, if you see a friend in a class and they have a graphic calculator, you'd be like, hey, are you actually graphing with that for the next two weeks? Can I trade you my TI-34? Then it will be set up and you will not have to scurry and try to set one up beforehand. I will try to get as many as I can, but again, it's the graciousness of the math department to allow us to use these from time to time. So once you have them all, here's the last thing. You'll notice that some are on and some are off. So if you ever have more than one on, that's bad. So you can always, by the way, if you don't know this, when you have numbers on the side, if you just click that number, it automatically activates it. So like when you're in this screen, which is second stat plot, if you just hit four, you'll turn all the plots off. Okay? So anybody questions of how, before I move on, I need L1, L2, L1, L3, L1, L4. So basically, I, I, I always do it to time. So basically, I'm, 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 I'm graphing concentration of time, natural log to time, inverse to time. Right? Zero for a second order. And please do not make preconceived ideas that this is impossible. People do well, it just takes a couple times. And you're like, oh my gosh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, so now what are we going to do? Yeah, me. Um, what one do we want on? The one that you want to graph. So right now, that, that's the key. So which one do you want on? You've got to do one at a time. So what we're going to do right now is go to stat plot one, click it, and then what you do is you highlight it to on. And then this is so important. Again, if it's not working, some calculators are a little different. To graph. Once you are done, and only one of them is on, what you do is you go, where's the graph button? Isn't it one of the top five buttons? The upper right button. Hit graph. And then, isn't there a zoom up there? Yes. Hit zoom. And then if you scroll all the way down, I believe number nine, am I, I'm doing this totally off of memory, like from a year ago. I haven't looked at it. Is it zoom stat? Is that the phrasing? Yeah. If you just hit nine, though, you don't have to select it. Hit zoom nine, and a graph should pop up. Oh. Yeah, it is. Max just said it's curvy. Well, what does that mean then? It is not what order? Zero. We're doing zero first second. So it's not zero order. Okay. So now what we need to do? 
I, did we all see a graph? It should have been a curve, like a, with a negative slope. Turn off. You got to go back to uh, second uh, stat plot. Turn off plot one. Turn on plot two, and then graph zoom nine. So the first one, by the way, should have looked something like this, I believe. What's the second one look like? But it's still curved? Okay, now, you're intelligent people. You'd probably be like, well, the last one's straight. That's probably right, but if it's not, you did something wrong. So go turn off one. I mean, the second one, first order. Turn on the third plot. Zoom sat nine. Crafts to zoom sat nine. And it should be going up. Correct? That is only because it's inverted. That's why it goes up. So, let's talk about answering these questions. Please, down below. We just did all that work to just do this. Don't clear anything. We're going to let our calculators do a lot more work for us yet. It says, determine the rate law of the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. Okay, what is a rate law in general? A rate law is rate. Don't write this yet. Is a rate equals K times concentration with an order. Okay, all of these with the calculator are going to only have one reactant always. We're not doing more than one. So this is how it looks. This is the answer for A. Rate equals K. We put the compound we're dealing with. So hydrogen peroxide. And what is my order? What did we determine? Second. It is second. Because the last graph was straight. Evelyn. Are you writing this on the calculator sheet? Or? Uh, I would do it right on the, the loose leaf piece of paper. I'm answering the A through D now. OK? B says determine the rate constant. Okay, what is the rate constant? What did we learn? It says it right above even, like in the, um, the, the, the note table. It's the slope, right? Okay. The last box, the last image, what you do to find slope. I know that this is, this is difficult. To, to kind of talk about. I'm just going to write it right here. To find slope, we go back to... Emily, can I just borrow yours for a second? Oh, by the way, if you have just dots, you can make it... Like, I don't know if you all just had dots without a line. Right here, like, I want to actually have a line, not just dots. So if you notice these images right here in, in stat plot, you can select that one, and then you have things connect instead of just dots. You can actually create a line. I like having that personally. That's just me. Okay, um, the last one right here. What do you do to find the slope? This is really important. <laughs> Sorry, Emma, can I just borrow that? So to get to, I'm talking about this image right here. To get to this, you go to stat. So I'm talking about the last one on there. So you might want to write these on the side. You select. So you got to slide it over, calc, you'll see that's on the top, you slide over, and then either you can just hit 4, or you can hit line rig, like you can actually just hit the 4 button or hit line rig. Now if you have an 84 plus, it's nice because it's actually going to ask you what, uh, what L's do you want, but if you hit that, just hit the line rig once. Tell me what, what, don't hit anything else. Just hit line rig. And it says line rig with this, right? Now, if you hit enter, you're going to get lucky if you get the right answer. Like, I mean, you hit enter once, but if you hit it again, because I think there's like a blinking cursor right now next to it. You have to define, this is the one part I, I find frustrating, because if you have an 84 plus, I think it actually asks you x-axis, y-axis. Otherwise, this is what you actually have to punch in. And please just wait. What's my graph? It's L1, L, and this one. So I got to pick the right one. Please, make sure you're, you're writing this down. 
This is a comma. So what you have to do is do second L1. So you have to find where L1 is, which is on the 1. The comma is above the 7 button. It should be. You see that? And then you hit L4. Now yours, I think, asks. That's awesome. Absolutely awesome. You have to do the L1 comma L whatever. In this case, it's L4. Please, it's not always L4. If it was first order, it'd be L3. If it was your order, it's L2. And what pops up, if you hit it, will be um, some data. Now, please be careful. Certain calculators say different things. Bless you. Like this one, it gives you the definition of the equation, and then it gives you an A, and it gives you a B. Please understand, some calculators, I don't know why, have the A's and the B's flipped. So which one's the slope, the A or the B? The A. So make sure you write the A. So what is it, by the way? I don't... 1.18. 1 well, let's just go there, okay? Okay, let's talk about units. Yesterday I rushed through this a little bit. Your unit. Remember, guys, rate is this. Now, please be careful. Circle or underline. You're dealing with minutes. So now it's not seconds in this one. Rate is always molarity over time. You have to cancel out that. Look at I have two molarities, so I have to get rid of one of them. So this is my way of always remembering units. I never have to make a mistake once. I know that it's always the opposite times the time. I always flip it, and then the exponent of my liters and moles is always one less than my overall order. So let me give you an example. If this thing was a 4, then this would be my rate constant. It's flipped molarity, one less than the overall order. It's always one less. It'll never change. It's always one less. So because this is a second order, that means I put ones and I flip it. So units are really important. We're going to get practice on it. We're not going to be perfect on it every single time in the beginning. But we'll get better at it. So how did I get that? That's my slope. Make sure that you're marking that down for later because this is meant to be a guide to get you through other problems. Okay, I have three more of these that we're going to practice. They're not homework. They're just practice problems. And I believe I handed one out today. Morgan. So think of it this way. Right now, this is molarity, and you're squaring this. So I have two of these on this side. I only need one. So this k has got to get rid of anything that I don't want to bring over here. So if I multiply this times that, what's left? Well, I get rid of one of these, and I also keep the time, because the time will go in there. Nope, that's what I need. So it's always one less than the overall order and flipped. Okay. okay? All right, what's the... The next question, what is the half-life? Okay, we'll talk about half-lives as we go, but I want to show you how we're going to do it for now. There is a memorized equation. I'll tell you now, all first order stuff is on your orange sheet. Where, oh, where, where, oh, here. All first order stuff is on your orange sheet. It's nice. And some second order stuff. We'll talk about that later. But. How can you do this? So right there on that sheet, there is a half-life. And, and it shows you how to do it. So time of half, 1 over k times concentration, initial concentration. We can just plop that in. But what if you don't memorize that? Let's, let's, I want to show you how you could do it if you don't memorize that. Sorry, I don't want this up here. So here we go. The Integrated rate law is y equals mx plus b. So this is what it looks like for second order. I'm just copying it right off of your sheet. So I would just rewrite that once. Again, going slow to try to show you. Now, if you memorize the half-life, that's fine. We've got 15 minutes to just work on two letters. So I'm feeling OK about this. OK, so let's talk about things we know. One, here's my k. I'm going to spread this out. Oh, and now I want half-life, so I'll talk about that. So I want half-life. So half-life, the notation is t to the half. So I'm just mirroring this equation right now. OK, what is my initial concentration? It's right on your, your graph, I mean your data table. 
It's time zero. What's my initial concentration? Point 0.3. Okay. So what is half-life? Half-life is the amount of time it takes to lose half of your substance. So this is the, the amount in question then. So how much would I have right there? 0.15. Now, I'm going to write it like this just so you're understanding what I'm doing. But I need half of that. Because I'm trying to find the half-life. So instead of plugging it into this memorized equation, and I'm gonna, we're going to be pounding this drum a lot. I mean, I have days set up on our schedule that literally says problem-solving days. We're just going to work. We're going to practice. We're going to see how this continues to apply the same way. I take half of what I started with. Okay? So this is the amount I started with. This is half. So can you get to this answer? Please try it. And, it, and what uh, unit's going to be? It's going to be in minutes because that's my time unit. It's not normal. It's usually seconds. So how much time does it take? And I will give you a hint. When you get your answer, look at your table. It should make sense with your table. What do I mean? That's point 0.3. Check it out. That's point 0.1. I mean, it's going to be point 0.15, right? Point 0.15 is in between here. So it should be between one minute and five minutes. Does that make sense? Like, what? When it drops to 0.15, it'll be between these values. Well, that value happens at five minutes. This value happens at one minute. So to get it right, if you have a table in front of you, you can actually see and feel good about it if it falls in the right spot on the data table, if, if, if that's potentially there. It's not always there. Hoping I'm, I'm feeling like I'm losing a few of you. Now I feel like someone's coming with ceiling tiles. It's, they're always here. Don't, don't come. I don't change them. Um, anybody get a time? I think it's in the threes, but I totally off the top of my head. What is it? 2.8? Can I get one more digit? Can I get a digit? Oh, I like my threes. Anybody else get that? Is that confirmed? Do we feel good? 2.8 something? Okay. If we have 2.8 something, I'll take it. That makes sense because, again, I need to get it to point. Uh, one five. I'm looking at the actual screen here, and that's this is one. This is uh, this is uh, greater than 0.15. This is less than 0.15. So it's in between these times, somewhere. So it'll take 2.81 minutes for this compound for hydrogen peroxide to break down and lose half of it. Okay. Now, just FYI, guys. Once you find the half life, to lose another half of that now is going to take another 2.81 minutes. FYI. You don't, it, it doesn't take another 2.81 minutes to lose all of it. A lot of people think that way. Oh, I have a certain amount, 0.3. Oh, it takes 2.81 minutes. And now it goes to this. And now everybody thinks it goes to that. No, what does it drop to next? You never lose it. That's what carbon dating is all about. Half lives. It's not like, oh, half of it's gone, the other half is gone, it's gone. No, now half of that, then half of that, then half of that. That's what a half life is. So, it, but it will be, once you figure out the half life, it's the same amount of time every time. So it's going to take 2.81 minutes for half of it to continually leave. So obviously the first time, first half life, you lose the most. And then you lose less, and then you lose less, and then you lose less. That's what half lives are. All right, last one. Letter D. Why I'm trying to pump this into your brain because I don't want you to memorize half-lives. The first order half-life is on your orange sheet. Like, I don't want you to memorize the equations because if you're understanding this, everything will work better. Like, you will not run into a roadblock because it's not about memorizing. It says, how much time is required for the reaction to be 95% complete? Okay, unfortunately, guys, we cannot talk about what's complete because complete is gone. It's products. We have to focus on reactants. So can anybody word that in a different way, in a way I like it, which is about reactants? If I want to talk about something that's 95% complete, I could also say it's 5% still remaining, right? So please write that on the side. I'm talking about 5% remaining. Very important. It's semantics, it's wording, but it's vital. So this is how I do it. 
I use this equation. Everything's still the same. Here I talked about half. Instead now, here, let me write above. I'm going to go up here. Now I need 5% of my original. Okay? Right? I need 5% of my original. That's what I have left. Not 95% because that's gone. And then everything else. And this is where I start feeling like people at least see, okay, I'm, I'm mirroring very similar ideas here. So now I'm solving for t. Why don't I put a half there? Because this isn't a half-life now. I'm wondering how long it takes, and this is what kinetics is about right now. How long will it take for 95% of my hydrogen peroxide to be consumed? Well, I can figure it out. And how can I figure it out? I know the relationship is a second order relationship. I can utilize my integrated rate law because integrated rate laws deal with time. And then I simply plug it in. FYI, the first and the second integrated rate laws, both on the orange sheet. They, they don't look exactly like this. They have it a little different. They have this subtracted on this side, equaling KT, but they're there. It's really nice. So guys, if you even look at your uh, sheet, you can see that, I mean, 0 0.05 times 0 0.3 is point, what is it? 0 0.015, and on our sheet it's 0 0.037, so it's going to be past that. It should be more than 20 minutes, I hope. But you should have a gauge of that. So by time, and then again, make sure your units are correct. It's in minutes. Where do I always get that from? It's going to be on my rate constant. It's usually seconds, by the way. They'll throw in minutes every once in a while just to be dirty. So what do we get? 53.7? 53.7 minutes. So I have a couple other announcements. Uh, the winner of the uh, Penny Wars with um, the fourth highest total ever of the last nine or eight years is 265 drops. Emma squared. Emma and Emma. Congratulations. Give him a hand. Hey. And the winner, and it's still being made, of the Esther Lab trophy. This was thrown away, so I put my nose inside of it for now. Uh, for the first time ever, uh, it, uh, I've never had to put the same names. It's Marco, Emma, and Emma. So they're gaining all the hardware. So their names will eventually be on the uh, Esther Lab trophy. They got four of the eight correct. Everybody else had three or less. So congratulations. So you'll see what you actually got. I will send that out later. Um, so uh, work on uh, try if you'd like that practice sheet. We're going to be going over that tomorrow. That's the first thing I'm going to do. So it says integrated rate law practice number one. It's mirroring just four letters. It's mirroring what we just did. Kinetics one. Kinetics one we will talk about as well, but you should uh, dent that hard because that is due tomorrow. Um, please don't be putting these things off. The whole point of working on the first half is that you could then finish that up and start practicing. The, the practice isn't technically due, but I will say this. You come in and just start writing from scratch, it's, it's not going to help you. It's not going to help you in the same way. Okay? Also, again, not expected that you go out and you buy your own, but if you have the ability, and if it is an excuse that you and your family were looking for to get one, because some of you are going to need one anyway later in college or whatnot, um, it's not a bad time, I would recommend TI-83. If I were buying a calculator right now, though, I'd buy a TI-84 Plus. That would be the one I would buy. Um, I honestly don't even know what the plus and everything means, but it's the most user-friendly. Uh, whenever I use those, they, they work out the best. If you borrowed one, please return it. I know the exact number that I need, so let's return those now. Uh, no one's leaving until I have the right number.
what you'd have to do then is plug them in, and um, like you'd actually have to like do natural log each number, and then um, each one, and then actually You guys, FYI, on the practice one, I might have flipped the uh, columns. Remember, the first column, L1, is always going to be time. If you do not have your own calculator, there are, you can make a spreadsheet on your iPad. You can make spreadsheets and things to graph. You can make things work like that. Uh, Chase, can you just hit the back uh, record button for me, please? I didn't. I wasn't watching. No.